Welcome back, everyone. This is The Way. This would be my full Mandalorian Season 4 teaser video. There were a whole bunch of storylines and plot threads they set up at the end of Season 3. So I'll explain what's going on with the show, as well as all the larger shows in the Mandoverse getting ready to cross over in the Thrawn movie and when everything is coming out. If you're brand new to the channel, we're getting ready for the Ahsoka episodes. That's going to be the next part of the timeline. Those will happen later this year. Of course, I'll be doing episode videos for them. Be sure to subscribe to get them all. I'll do a special giveaway when those start, too. We'll get another Ahsoka trailer pretty soon that'll explain a little bit more of the story. I just did a bunch of Ahsoka videos explaining who all the new characters are, like those new Dark Jedi that aren't technically Sith. Careful for spoilers from the Season 3 finale if you haven't seen it yet, but just starting with number 10, the Mandalorian and Grogu left the Armorers group, the larger group of Mandalorians led by Bo-Katan, the Night Owls, the ones that had so far come back to Mandalore. There are other Mandalorians out there that will slowly crawl out of the woodwork and come back. But they did it this way to soft reboot the show heading into season four so that the show could get back to being mostly about the two of them having adventures together like season one. Season three got a little out of control trying to handle the larger storytelling during this part of the timeline leading up to the Grand Admiral Thrawn movie plot, dealing with all the stuff that they set up during season one and season two with the Mandalorians retaking the planet Mandalore from Moff Gideon, the Empire setting up everything that was happening in the Ahsoka series, as well as Skeleton Crew. They haven't been hijacked quite as much by Skeleton Crew. They've kind of been developing that as its own thing, even though it's part of the Mandoverse. Grand Admiral Thrawn's return will herald in the re-emergence of our military. About Thrawn's return as heir to the Empire. But one of the big things about The Mandalorian during season one is that it was meant to be this small little part of the galaxy, a smaller show about this character in Grogu just going around having adventures, and it kind of spun up into a much bigger thing during season two and season three. So they're kind of soft resetting the show now that we have Ahsoka and we have these other shows that can handle some of that larger storytelling. They don't have to all do it during The Mandalorian. Number nine, the Praetorian Guard destroyed Grogu's IG-12 mech body. They reused the memory core from the head of the other IG-11 droid at Carson Teva's New Republic Adelphi base to fix the old IG-11 like their friend IG-11. Wrapping up that season-long plot that started in episode one, allowing IG-11 to become Greek Karga's new marshal. So he'll continue to do that during season three. Like those characters will come back during season three briefly. But Grogu will not use the mech body anymore. He'll just go back to using his pod and walking around. Like, they're getting better with the special effects, even though it looks so hilarious when Grogu is walking around on his own, like his tiny little legs trying to carry him around with Mando. Come, Grogu. Grogu will also continue to get more Beskar armor pieces, or Mando will give him more armor pieces through the armor. He has the chainmail shirt that he wore all season long. If you didn't see it, he was wearing that underneath his little potato sack the entire season. The armor also gave him his Rondell upgrade. That's a little chest plate here. He'll get at least one more armor piece from the armor. Like Bo-Katan, the armor, those characters will still be featured during season four, but they just won't be as big as they were during season three. They'll only go visit them briefly. Number eight, since Mando adopted Grogu as his son, he took the creed, he became a Mandalorian as part of the Armors clan, formerly the Children of the Watch. He achieved the next level in their group apprenticeship. The Armor charged him with taking Din Grogu now, as his name is, on his journeys, which is what they'll be doing between season three and season four and during season four, like a series of adventures, bounty hunting in the Outer Rim, as Mando told Carson Teva. They wanted to let you know what they're going to be doing between adventures too, which is why Grief Karga gave him the little house on the range, like little home on the range, because we're talking about space western here. It was very western vibes at the end of the episode. But the whole idea with all these bounty hunting missions is that Grogu will slowly learn more about the actual stock and trade of bounty hunting in the way that Mando mostly did that during season one. I can bring you in warm, or I can bring you in cold. Having them going around the galaxy bounty hunting is an easy way to also cameo them on other series like the Ahsoka series, even the Skeleton Crew series eventually, even though technically that's going to take place in a completely different part of the galaxy. So structurally, it just makes it easier for them to cameo Grogu and Mando on other shows now. Now they've separated them from the Mandalore storyline, the other Mandalorians. Number seven, big surprise too, is that Din Djarin's first name is technically Jaren. I always thought that his first name was Din. Apparently not. The Mandalorian culture, I guess, just uses the first name, surname convention a little bit differently. But Mando, pretty much everybody else on the show, with a few exceptions, will just call him Grogu going forward. 
I think only the armor, the other members of the armor's group will probably use his full Din Grogu name just because she's so formal all the time. Number six, Grogu will continue to train in the Force the same way that Ahsoka continued to deepen her connection in the Force, practice the Force outside of the Jedi Order after she'd left. His path in the Force will be kind of like Ahsoka. She's a good template for him, like he isn't pursuing the Jedi path under Luke Skywalker at his Jedi Academy. He's not becoming a great Jedi or anything like that. Even Dave Filoni says that Ahsoka isn't a great Jedi, technically. She's not like the Bendu either, because he practiced both the dark side and the light side force equally, becoming true neutral. Jedi and Sith wield the Ashlar and Bogan, the light and the dark. I'm the one in the middle, the Bendu. And Grogu and Ahsoka will just continue to be more light side leaning force users. They use the Jedi term during the Ahsoka trailer, but Dave Filoni has said in the past too, and even Ahsoka herself in her own episodes previously has told people that she is no Jedi. I think the reason they did it this way in the Ahsoka trailer is just for people who aren't hardcore Star Wars fans, don't really understand the technicalities of the way that Ahsoka thinks of herself that way. It was more for their benefit to let them know that there would be Force users in the series. So they just wanted to make it as simple as possible. Like, oh, you have Jedi, then you have something else here that seemed kind of like evil Jedi, which would technically be called Dark Jedi. And when Disney is marketing Grogu Star Wars merch for Grogu, they'll just continue to think of him the same way. Like, they'll call him Jedi, even though technically he is not a Jedi. But as Grogu continues to encounter more Force users, like more people from the canon start showing up on the series, and a lot of people expecting him to meet Ezra Bridger, the other characters, they'll continue to pass on more lessons to Grogu in the Force. But Ahsoka already said that she wasn't going to become Grogu's master, or she couldn't be Grogu's master, just because she's so traumatized from what happened to Anakin Skywalker, and she sensed the same fear in Grogu. So on the small chance that the same fate could befall Grogu, she didn't want to take that chance. But she will continue to help him with his path through the Force, like she'll point him in directions that she thinks will help him deepen his connection to the Force. Number five, The Mandalorian Season 4 will likely release in early 2025 at the rate they've been producing episodes recently of all these new series. Before this year happened, I would have said late 2024 because they're going to start filming by October this year. But Disney just pumped the brakes, slowed down all the Star Wars, all the Marvel series releases, even the movie releases. So right now, the 2024 Star Wars series they confirm being released are Skeleton Crew First, which is a Mandalorian spinoff during the same part of the timeline in a completely different part of the galaxy. That'll probably cover some of the other members of the Shadow Council on the Empire side of things, too. Like, they'll still continue to be a big thing in this part of the timeline on all the different shows. Star Wars Acolyte, which is a High Republic era show set 100 years before Phantom Menace about the rise of the Sith, like a completely separate thing. Maybe there'll be some loose references to what's happening in this part of the timeline, but not that many because it'll just be covering stuff way earlier in the timeline. The Bad Batch Season 3 and Tales of the Jedi Season 2. Number four, because The Mandalorian Season 4 will release after Ahsoka Season 1, and Ezra Bridger, Sabine Wren, the crew of the Ghosts, like Hera, are coming back during that. We even saw Zeb cameo during The Mandalorian Season 3. Since they're all coming back during that, Grogu will meet Ezra Bridger eventually, and he'll learn more Force abilities from him. That is to say, Ezra will pass on some of his wisdom to Grogu. I believe part of the idea with Ezra Bridger being lost in the unknown regions for all these years and then eventually finding him, he will come back a changed person. Like fundamentally, he'll be the same person, but he'll have gone through so much stuff that he'll learn so many new things. I'm not expecting a giant cameo scene from Mando and Grogu during the Ahsoka series, maybe just like a small one. And mostly the antagonist of that will be Grand Admiral Thrawn, but during the Ahsoka series, they will address what's happening with some of these other Shadow Council members. They'll still be around during The Mandalorian Season 4, though. Like, they'll slowly start dealing with all the different ones. It was just a teaser during Season 3. Number 3, Season 4 will also be released before the big Thrawn movie, the heir to the Empire movie based on the original Thrawn trilogy. Dave Filoni said they're continuing to mine the expanded universe Thrawn trilogy, that part of the Legends canon, for the story. They're great books. I would recommend checking them out at some point, but obviously they're changing some of that story to fit with the canon in present day. But the Thrawn movie is meant to serve as the culmination of all the storylines that have been happening since Mandalorian Season 1 on the Ahsoka series that'll be happening during the new Skeleton Crew series, even though we only just got the teaser for that. 
But the way that Jon Favreau talks about it, they'll just stay in this part of the timeline continuing to tell stories for a long time. He didn't say how many seasons all the different shows are going to get or if there'd be more spinoff shows. He just said they had 20 plus years that they could tell stories in during this part of the timeline and that this wouldn't be the end of them doing Mandoverse stuff. So if the Dave Filoni movie winds up doing as well as we all expect it to, they will probably do more of that kind of stuff. Part of the reason why Lucasfilm announced so many different movies in different parts of the timeline is because it's a shotgun method. Like they're not committing to full trilogies from any of the different parts of the timeline yet. They want to see how these first movies do. But number two, because of this, season four could theoretically be the last season of The Mandalorian, just depending on what's going on behind the scenes with all the Mandoverse shows at the time. But that doesn't mean they'll stop telling Grogu stories during this part of the timeline. They've already confirmed that there are plans for Ahsoka season two, but they won't formally announce that till after season one airs. But number one, because they just announced the new sequel movie set 15 years after The Rise of Skywalker, Grogu would be about the same age Yoda was when he became a Jedi Master, meaning by then he'd be fully matured, he'd have long since started speaking the basic tongue like everyone else. So Grogu could actually be in that sequel era movie, but the thing is, Jon Favreau said a lot of weird stuff about Grogu being in the future movies. But after all the announcements, like after we learn the truth of what's actually going on, they're being just kind of selective about where Grogu does appear. So the Thrawn movie, I think, is meant to be the first movie that Grogu actually appears in, and it sounds like the sequel movie will be the first one to come out in 2025. And if you think about it, they don't want to spoil what happens to Grogu by showing you older, the Chad version of Grogu, before they show you the young version of Grogu in the movies. So I'm only expecting some Easter eggs, some light references to what's happening with Grogu in that part of the timeline, like the new Jedi Order. That just gets into the whole idea of him becoming the Mandalorian Jedi, like he is the next coming of Tar Vizsla, basically. All hoping that he forges a new lightsaber, and that's like the new version of the Darksaber, even though I don't think he's going to wield the Darksaber. Early theory right now is that eventually Bo-Katan will repair that with the help of the Jedi droid, which is actually with Ahsoka right now on her ship, as we saw in the footage. And if Grogu builds his own lightsaber, it'll be something completely different. So you can let me know in the comments, what kind of lightsaber do you want him to wield in the future? I'll start doing more Ahsoka videos really soon too. So if you have any requests, just leave them in the comments below. Everyone click here for my full Mandalorian season three, episode eight finale video, and click here for all my Ahsoka trailer videos to find out what's going on with Grand Admiral Thrawn. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. This is the way.